Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, Congress has dealt you and the President an impossible hand. The United States has a confusing, dysfunctional, and often cruel immigration system, and you're charged with executing the laws that are associated with it. We all know, as senators and Americans, that undocumented workers are an essential part of our economy. From the fields and orchards of California, Arizona, Utah, and Florida, to the meat and poultry plants of Iowa, Illinois, and across the Midwest, to the major restaurants in Washington, D.C. and Chicago, we avert our eyes and pretend these workers are all legal. We know better. They're an essential part of our economy, and yet there is this revulsion, aversion, and negative feeling about this, and you're caught in the middle. You're given these laws and said, make them work. I think you are right to speak about the issue of prosecutorial discretion. Every president and the members of the cabinet under the president have that responsibility, even recognized by the Supreme Court. And I certainly think you were right on August 17th when you sent me a letter saying that DHS will review all pending deportation cases and that cases involving criminals and threats to public safety will be given priority, while low priority cases will be closed in many instances. You also said DHS would issue guidance to prevent low priority cases from being put into deportation proceedings in the future. I appreciate your commitment to this process, but I'm concerned. It's been four months since the Morton Memo was issued and two months since you announced the process for implementing it. The review of pending deportation cases, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, has not yet begun. In fact, we do not even know what the criteria will be for the review, and you have not issued guidance on who will be put into deportation proceedings in the future. So, when will your review of pending deportation cases begin? Well, the review of pending deportation cases, I think it's important to segregate cases coming into the system versus those that are on the master docket already. That's the 300,000 that I was referring to with Senator Grassley earlier. Those cases, that, that process involves not just DHS but DOJ as, as well. Uh, there has been an interagency group uh, working on how you actually accomplish that. Uh, my understanding is that uh, within the next few weeks they will begin uh, piloting in certain districts the actual review and our hope very shortly thereafter to begin uh, going through the master docket cases. You know, the goal, of course, is to administratively close some of the low priority cases so that we can facilitate handling the higher priority cases. In a way, we're kind of reverse, we're trying to adjust the line in terms of who goes through. Now, in terms of... What's the, the time frame? I'm trying to... I don't I have an end time frame, but I can share with you that I would expect the full review process to be, well, the pilot will start in a few weeks. I, I would say two to three weeks. Um, uh, the pilot is not going to be one of these six or 12 month typical pilots. It will be very short and it's designed to find logistical issues that happen when you're trying to do massive review of lots of cases all at the same time. So we all want to move as quickly as possible once we kind of identified uh, that we've got the logistics down. So let me ask you this. There are troubling reports that there are ICE and CBP field offices which have announced that these new deportation priorities do not apply to them. Is that true? Well, if, if there are some, I would like to know about it. I have personally, by VTC, uh, spoken with the heads of the ICE ERO offices across the country and the heads of the OPLA offices across the country, which are the regional council. Uh, my understanding is that they are very excited about uh, having clear um, priorities, that the priorities are the right ones. The priorities, actually, Senator, I, I gave this committee in May of 2009. I said we were going to start moving the system so we could focus on criminal aliens, and, and that's what we are doing. I was going, to, at this point, to uh, show the faces and tell the stories of three Dream Act students. Uh, whom I believe most people would agree, having been brought to this country at a very early age, have made um, an amazing um, record uh, in their short lives and are being held back from contributing to the United States. And I certainly believe the president's criteria and your criteria are the right criteria. 
Let us focus on removing those people who are a threat to our nation. That should be our highest priority, and it certainly will not include these college graduates desperate to go to work and make this a better nation. So I hope uh, that you'll continue along this line on an expedited basis.